Well, good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer. Today is Wednesday the 5th of October and I hope you're well. Do feel free to put something in the chat to let me know that you're here. Thank you for joining me. And as always, we use the form of prayer written by the Reverend David Adam in his book, The Rhythm of Life. We use one of the day's readings and a reflection on the reading. On a Wednesday, the theme for prayer is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of the Lord fills the whole world. The Spirit of the Lord moves over the deep. The Spirit of the Lord warms our hearts. The Spirit of the Lord fills all things. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Lord of life. Come, wind of heaven. Come, flame of love. Come, giver of all gifts. Come and fill us. And the psalm today is Psalm 139. The Spirit of God is in all the world. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night, darkness is not dark to you, the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you, because I am marvellously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. The Spirit of God is in all the world. And we continue reading from the book of Acts and we've reached Acts chapter 20. And if you were with us yesterday, you'll know there'd just been a, a kind of a riot in Ephesus and that's where we left things. So Acts chapter 20. When the uproar had ended, Paul sent for the disciples and after encouraging them, said goodbye and set out for Macedonia. He travelled through that area, speaking many words of encouragement to the people and finally arrived in Greece where he stayed three months. Because some Jews had plotted against him just as he was about to sail for Syria, he decided to go back through Macedonia. He was accompanied by Sophater, son of Pyrrhus from Berea, Aristarchus and Secundus from Thessalonica, Gaius from Derby, Timothy also, and Tychius and Trophimus from the province of Asia. These men went on ahead and waited for us at Troas, but we sailed from Philippi after the festival of unleavened bread and five days later joined the others at Troas, where we stayed seven days. On the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people and because he intended to leave the next day, kept on talking until midnight. There were many lamps in the upstairs room where we were meeting. Seated in a window was a young man named Eutychus. He was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. When he was sound asleep, he fell to the ground from the third story and was picked up dead. Paul went down and threw himself on the young man and put his arm round him. Don't be alarmed, he said, he's alive. Then he went upstairs again and broke bread and ate. After talking until daylight, he left. The people took the young man home alive and were greatly comforted. We went on ahead of the ship and sailed for Assos where we were going to take Paul aboard. He had made this arrangement because he was going there on foot. When he met us at Assos, we took him aboard and went on to Mytilene. The next day we set sail from there and arrived off Chios. The day after that we crossed over to Samos and on the following day arrived at Miletus. Paul had decided to sail past Ephesus to avoid spending time in the province of Asia, for he was in a hurry to reach Jerusalem if possible, by the day of Pentecost. So the next uh, 
next sort of saga, the next part of that incredible saga of the early church and Paul's journeys. Let me read a reflection for you. And this week they're written by the Reverend Isabel Hamley. She says, it is business as usual among the little Christian community in Troas, breaking bread, praying, studying the scriptures. Well, mostly usual, as clearly an amazing event has gathered them late through the night. Paul, the great teacher, is with them and nothing will deprive them from learning at his feet, not even a spectacular fall through a window and a miraculous healing. I wonder how many of our meetings see us gathered with such eagerness and thirst, or how much we expect God to be at work within them. The believers here are overjoyed and comforted by God's intervention, but not surprised. They had no expectation that God would necessarily heal, as if God always did. Neither did they assume he would not. Their Christian imagination was large enough to hold the possibility of healing and the reality of death and sorrow, and weave both through their life together. I wonder how we shape such imagination today. How do we avoid the twin dangers around healing, to think it never happens or that it always does? Both beliefs try to make life manageable by making God predictable and in the process diminish him but they reduce rather than expand our imagination. To live in the in-between, in the unknown, forces us into an open place with broad horizons, a place where mechanistic principles cannot replace relationship with God. Maybe today is a day to pray, expand our imagination. I think that's really thoughtful, isn't it? To, to live in that place, in the in-between, the open place, between the never happening and the always happening. Not uh, ensuring that God isn't predictable and being open to God, asking him to expand our imaginations. And so we pray and we do begin with the special prayer for this week. Lord of creation, whose glory is around and within us, open our eyes to your wonders that we may serve you with reverence and know your peace at our lives end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lords. Amen. <clears throat> on all who are dispirited and dejected, on all who have lost hope or joy, on all who are unable to cope, on all who are weak and heavy burdened, on all who are fearful and anxious, on all who are lost and have strayed, on all who are powerless and helpless, Lord, have mercy. Holy Spirit, bringing order out of chaos, Holy Spirit, breathing life into the lifeless. Holy Spirit, making strong the weak. Holy Spirit, guiding all who venture. Holy Spirit, filling all things. Come, renew the face of the earth. And a prayer from the Coromila community. God of a deep and deepening peace. God of calm that steadies our pace. May we take whatever moment we need to gather ourselves for the journey ahead. May we feel the rock of your presence beneath us, the assurance of shelter you provide in embrace, and the promise of company gathered close by your spirit, so that as we approach the unknown ahead, we remember a strength that can never give way. Amen. And we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The strength of God, guide us. The power of God, preserve us. The wisdom of God instruct us. The Spirit of God be within us today and evermore. So may God the Father bless us. May Christ the Son take care of us. May the Holy Spirit enlighten us all the days of our lives. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me for today. Um, there is a service in church this morning at 11 o'clock, so do feel free to join us. And we'll be back here for prayer tomorrow at 9.45. Until then, take care and God bless. Bye for now.